Van Hotel Lima Echo November Radio Check. Papa Echo November, good afternoon, uh, Richard 5. Good afternoon, Richard 5 as well, Papa Echo November. The X-Zone radio and TV show is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the X-Zone radio and TV show or in any manner endorsed by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, Talkstar Radio Network, its affiliated stations, or employees. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. Yes, we're still coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. Our email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, xzoneradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. Exo Nation, my guest this hour is Rick Stack, and we're going to be talking about the secret of healing cancer and the Seth material. Now, Rick is a former student of Jane Roberts, attended over 100 Seth sessions. He is the publisher and the editor of the Seth Audio Collection, the early sessions, book one through nine of the Seth material, the personal sessions, and other books by Jane Roberts. The author of -of Out-of-Body Adventures, 30 Days to the Most Exciting Experience of Your Life. He has been teaching workshops on Seth material, dreams, out-of-body experiences, and metaphysics internationally for over 35 years. He worked with Jane's husband on the publication of previously unpublished Seth material. Now, Rick has been on the faculty of many schools throughout the United States and has appeared on numerous radio and television shows. His projects include being on the board of advisors for the World Feast, uh, the World Peace Festival, uh, Berlin, that is, and a global outreach program to educate and introduce people to the Seth material. He is also the president and executive producer of the New York Dinner Theater, a theatrical production company operating in the Northeast U.S. for over 18 years. As president of New Awareness Network, Inc., he lives in Manhasset, Long Island. Here's a couple of websites, www.sethlearningcenter.org and sethcenter.com. And Rick Stack, welcome to the X-Zone. How are you tonight, Rick? I'm doing great and a pleasure to be here. Rick, for our listeners who may not know who Jane Roberts is, can you tell them? Okay. Well, Jane Roberts is an author, Mm -hmm. and Seth is the internationally acclaimed spiritual teacher who spoke through that author, Jane Roberts, while she was in a trance state. Seth coined the phrase that you may have heard, the New Age or the Consciousness Studies movement, you create your own reality. 
he was the actual one to coin that phrase. Of course, he doesn't claim that that is his alone in that this is uh, an, uh, an age-old truth. Uh, this Seth's empowering me- message, many consider that he literally launched the so-called New Age movement. Wow. Rich, you and I have to take a two-minute commercial break. When we come back, sure. I'd love you to tell us more about Seth and his message and also talk about your book, Out of Body Adventures. Exonation Rick Stack is my special guest this hour. He's the publisher of The Secret Healing, I'm sorry, The Secret to Healing Cancer and The Seth Material. His websites are www.sethlearningcenter.org and sethlearningcenter.com. I'm sorry, sethcenter.com. I'm having a hard time with my new glasses today. Sorry about that, guys. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break in two minutes. As the Exxon continues, and I go and get my old glasses out of my office. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. I'll be back. Don't go away. This is an important message for people who are looking for employment. We are a newly established company and have the following positions available. Sales reps, cleaners, customer service reps, accountant, general laborers, secret shoppers, marketers, drivers, writing and editing personnel. If you are interested in any of these positions, for more details concerning these jobs and an interview... Send an email to leecrat at gmail.com. That's leecrat at gmail.com. Welcome back, everyone. Rick Stack is my special guest. Websites www.sethlearningcenter.org and sethcenter.com. Rick, uh, what is your relationship to Jane Roberts and Seth? Well, uh, when I was about 21 years old, in uh, quite, I guess it was 1970 ish. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, uh, at that time, read a Seth book after studying metaphysics for quite a few years. I had been studying since I was like 15, 16. And I wound up, a uh, long story, but when I wound up uh, uh, being invited up to Jane Roberts' class in Elmira, New York, which is about 250 miles away from New York City. And I started going to class every week, a 500-mile trip. Holy and God. I went every week for three years uh, at that time and uh, attended uh, Jane Roberts' class, where Seth used to come through also and uh, teach the class, basically. Uh, with, so it was sort of Jane and Seth's class. So Jane Roberts was a channel? She was a channel, that's correct. Okay. Now, what kind of impact did both Jane Roberts and Seth have on you? Here you are, you're in your early 20s, you're, you're making that 500-mile trip. There had to be something very significant that was happening to you. Well, as mentioned, you know, many people consider Seth to be uh, one one of the, the major voices that mm-hmm. launched the New Age. The thing about Seth really was the quality of his teaching, and that's why his books have withstood the, the test of time. There are there are 32 Seth books uh, that were written. And what I could say is that Seth opened my eyes, uh, woke me up to uh, to a spiritual growth process that started there and... and uh, affected me so deeply uh, that it changed my entire life. And uh, Seth is not a guru. Uh, his whole thing is really to turn people back to their own resources, to realize 
that they have uh, within them uh, access to inner knowledge and to sources of information. And it's not all that hard once you start to, you don't have to go up on a mountaintop or anything. Mm -hmm. You just have to really have the desire and the intent. You can learn a few methods and stuff. And, uh, you know, there's certainly, he wrote 32 books on this. Obviously, it's not, you know, just as simple as that. But uh, he began to wake me up to this concept, really, that physical reality itself, the whole, our whole life, is a, is a training system, and that's just, or a school, and that's just an analogy, really, because it's more than that, but uh, that we're here to learn certain things and, and to become conscious creators with all that is, with God, and to grow spiritually, and uh, this, this is sort of like the ABCs. And when you f- finish with this whole dimension of reality, mm-hmm. that's pretty much what you've learned is just your ABCs, and you go on from there. And of course, the, the details of that is what the 32 books are about, uh, what, you know, what you're supposed to learn, etc. I was wondering if you could take us back to your, your classes and, and describe how Jane Roberts would contact or, or connect with Seth. Well, well Jane was... Uh, I guess, uh, you know, a, a sort of a, um, a deep trance channel, I guess you'd call her, or uh, uh, she would go into trance. Mm-hmm. And it was very unspooky, you know, that everybody was sitting around talking, and uh, uh, Jane was herself was a very sort of down-to-earth person. And um, she had done this many times before. She started out with her Ouija board, and pro- progressively she heard this voice in her head and started speaking. But it was speaking very lucidly, and the things that they had to say were she found impressive. And basically she would just go into trance. She'd close her eyes, take off her glasses, because apparently Seth didn't need her glasses and could use her eyes better. That's what he claimed, anyway. I can't see what he saw, but uh, but then and then he would just start speaking in a different voice, though. Uh, mm-hmm. That the uh, the voice was just you know definitely a uh, different quality. Where and then that was it. And she would, he would run the class a little, for a while. Then she would run the class for a while. And um, it, it was what can I say? It was it, it, his teaching was of such incredible. Uh, quality, and I had studied just about everything before I got there, because mm-hmm. I had uh, been a student of religion and uh, the origin of religion and Egyptology and the Eleusinian mysteries and the Gnosis, and you name it, I studied it, and this was like a breath of fresh air. It's un- unbelievable. Where was Steph, or where is Steph, that Jane was able to communicate? Was he in a different dimension? Was he in a different well, reality? Well, according to Steph, yeah. And it's Seth, Seth, S-C-T-H, okay? Right. Uh, physical reality itself is just one of numberless realities. In certain terms, it's an illusion it's a, in that we think it's solid. We think that the table is solid, and as our physicists are telling us now, the table isn't really solid. It's, it's 99 and 99, 100% pure space. That's a, a fact that the, the quantum physicists are telling us. The rest is just pure whirling energy. So what we're looking at, we, we think that this world is solid, but it's really just an energy, it's, a, it's really a miraculous energy system. And it is within a larger reality. The physical reality is not the whole ball of wax, according to Seth. And Seth resides in that inner reality, and according to him, so do we. We have an eternal soul, as you will, a higher self that lives there full time. And we have reincarnations that occur simultaneously because our concept of time is distorted also, according to Seth, and that these reincarnational personalities are sent out and they learn and grow and until, until the lessons are learned and then there's a return back to that, that other side. However, we also visit that other side every night in the sleep state. And one can learn, of course, to lucid dream or, have, or astral project, as it were. Uh, uh, there's not that much difference between the two. Uh, there, there is some differences depending on your definition. But one can learn to leave the body uh, now in physical reality. You don't have to wait till you die. And you can get sort of a, uh, well, a preview. And, in fact, it helps to get that preview because you'll be, you'll be far less disoriented uh, upon physical death. So he lives on the other side, but so do we. Who now channels Seth? Uh, no, no one is channeling Seth now, although there's been many people who claim to have channeled Seth, mm-hmm. even while Seth was around. Uh, they would call up Jane and say, well, I'm, I'm channeling Seth now. And Seth would go, no, it's really, it's not me. 
Uh, I will not channel through anyone else but Jane Roberts. And the reason why is because otherwise no one would know who the Seth, the real Seth was, and it would always be a question, who's the real Seth? And so in order to preserve the integrity of the 32 books that I'm going to go to the trouble of, of writing over the course of Jane's lifetime, mm. I'm not going to channel through anybody else. But still to this day, we have other people claiming, but there's not been anybody that I've seen that is remotely close to Seth's material. Rick, why do Seth and Jane Roberts still resonate with millions of readers around the world, even after she's been gone for, what is it, over 25 years now? Yes, and, and this, is the, this has to do, again, with the, the quality of the material. Seth describes... A, uh, a methodology, or uh, it's, not, it's not really the methodology. He describes um, a spiritual growth process. Uh, the, way, the way he describes this is that the entity, or the inner self, sends a portion of itself into physical reality in order to experience this reality for the purposes of learning, but also just for the purposes of joy and expression. That personality has to wake up on its own on its own. It has to become, it has to actualize itself, it has to understand what it is, it has to become a responsible creator, it has to understand that it creates its own reality, mm -hmm. it has to learn how to be skillful at that, and it has to learn the basic lessons of, of like the love, uh, of the, the, the positive desire for love and uh, over-destruction and hatred. And once it learns these lessons, the, it's going to go on to the next, the next dimension or whatever, the next, the, the next step. And so Seth describes this in great detail as far as the actual psychology, for example. There's a book uh, that he wrote called The Nature of Personal Reality, a book called Seth Speaks. Those are the two biggest sellers. And I certainly recommend if anyone wants to start that they start with Seth Speaks and The Nature of Personal Reality. But he goes into the psychology of how people create reality so thoroughly and so so well that lot, many people consider that the classic on the so-called law of attraction or the art of uh, manifestation. And and it's not just about positive thinking. Uh, it, there are many people who think have discovered that just by positive thinking they don't wind up uh, getting what they want and going where they want to go. Uh, it's a little. It's 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 more complex than that. Uh, not that it's that much more complex, but that there are missing steps here. And one of those steps has to do with knowing that you have to take action on what on, you, you need to manipulate your thoughts, emotions, beliefs. Mm -hmm. So that's true. But you also need to then take action on the impulses that are going to arrive when you change your beliefs. So there's a mastery of your mind that is involved. The, the art of creating your reality. You create your reality according to your thoughts, your emotions, your beliefs, and your expectations. This is your palette. By learning to master and watch what you're thinking and then change and manipulate your thoughts, you can, li you can literally create almost any reality you want within the range of probabilities. But this must be uh, go hand-in-hand hand with a direct connection with your inner self. And each individual is, has that inner self, has that connection, and but we have been taught the the ego has become more or less a tyrant, mm. and has uh, to some degree, to some considerable degree, blocked off that intuitive portion of the self. So it's always going to be this combination of those two, in order to uh, in, in order to affect this spiritual growth that Seth talks about. So this message, along with all of the stuff he goes into dreams in, in depth, out of body experiences, um, mass events, uh, how mass uh, the probable realities and parallel universes. Uh, and this is you know 30 years ago that, that he went into this. And although the quantum physicists were into the same stuff, mm -hmm. the general public did not know about this. And his books uh, on on parallel universe theory, for example, are quite sophisticated. So his material was really of such great quality that to this day, it, it, uh, the material is held up and is still not only not advanced, it's still cutting edge. All right, Rick, stand by. Thank you very much for joining us. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. When we come back from this commercial break with the news, Richard Stack and I continue our conversation about 
the Seth material. Here's a couple of websites, ExoNation, www.sethlearningcenter.org and sethcenter.com. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern here on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, and our broadcast affiliates worldwide. Richard Stack and I return on the other side of this news break. Don't go away. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnick's, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. You're listening to the Exxon Radio Show, live and around the world on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, and Star Cable. Our toll-free telephone number worldwide is 1-800-610-7035. Our email address, xzone at TV.com. On MSN Messenger, TV at hotmail.com. And our website, www. Dot Exxon Radio TV dot com. And welcome back, everyone. This is The Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell. My guest this hour is Rick Stack, and we're talking about the Seth books. And, uh, Rick, before we went uh, to the commercial break, we were talking about Jane Roberts and Seth, how you got involved in the in, in, in the business of publishing the books on Seth. But a question I'd like to ask you at this time is, do people need to believe in psychic phenomenon to to benefit from Seth's messages? No, you, you don't. I mean, you know, the fact of the matter, it, it, it is channeled material. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, the material does stand on its own. Um, and you don't have to walk in, uh, if you're interested, uh, believing even that whether Seth exists or not. Uh, if you're someone that's interested in uh, inner exploration, mm-hmm dream work, out-of-body experiences, or someone that's interested in the law of attraction, as I said, Seth was, uh, many of the people, authors today that actually wrote books on the law of attraction will, will mention the nature of personal reality, and Seth as being one of their, their first books that they ever read that really woke them up to this material. So so the answer, in short, is uh, no, you don't have to uh, believe in psych- psychic uh, abilities, but then again, psychic abilities, or you know, pure ESP, right. telepathy, that kind of stuff has actually been proven in the laboratory. Laboratories throughout the mm-hmm. universities throughout the world, it's 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 uh, old hat, and it's uh, there's no question that uh, that the average person, the average person, has a psychic ability. You know, earlier in this interview, we discussed uh, one of Seth's most famous remarks as "We can change our reality." 
Have you ever used his techniques to change your very own reality? Well, of course. And and the principle is, you know, you create reality uh-huh. according to your thoughts, your emotions, and beliefs. That the outer world is a reflection of your inner world. There are typical belief systems, and we can go into the evolution of that. That takes a little bit longer. But there's an official line of consciousness that came uh, in our development, and without going into too much detail, that official line of consciousness, which has religious and scientific underpinnings, mm-hmm. tells the individual. He's taught that you don't create reality, that either God creates reality or nobody creates reality, that there's just random accidents, that the human being is actually a flawed and tainted creature, either either because of original sin or because uh, he's just the survival of the fittest and Darwinian thought we're just really animals, and that the universe is really not a safe place. Uh, there's all enemies that can hit you from without or from within, mm-hmm. even, and you can get struck by cancer or disease or crime or accidents at any time. This is what we're taught. Yeah. Now, those belief systems then create the reality of, uh, that, that we see in the world, and they result in a lot of problems, uh, for example, disease and war, etc. Okay, the individual can learn to, to change their beliefs. And there are very simple ways of doing this. You learn to, uh, you get what you concentrate upon. There is no other main rule. So that's the law of attraction. This, this law is, is immutable. It works all, it always works. Whatever you focus on, you're going to get in whatever world you find yourself in until you figure that out. So you learn to manipulate your thoughts. And this has to do with a combination of listening to your inner self mm-hmm. to help you guide you in the selection of this uh, of, of your, uh, your your beliefs, going along with that information, a spontaneous going along and giving yourself up to to the spontaneity of your being, and also manipulating your beliefs. So a person in, in this theory, if a person really believes that it's a dog eat dog world and is concentrating on those kind of thoughts, they're going to literally bring events into their life that reflect that. If a person changes their belief right. to believe that the universe is really fundamentally a good place, that what they are inside of them is good, and that the, that humanity, although it has its problems, and although there's crazy people or we or people that are at an early stage of development. But humanity itself, deep down, is good. When you focus on that, then you will attract into your life events, literally events, that will demonstrate that to you. If you believe that you're worthy, then you're going to attract things that will uh, reflect that. If you believe your universe is safe, then you're going to attract things that that attract uh, attr- uh, that reflect that if you believe it's hard to make a buck in this world it's going to be hard to make well a let, buck let me ask you this then Rick and and I hope you you take what I'm going to say with a little bit of a grain of salt Seth said and this is a quote if you're in poverty you can instead find yourself surrounded by abundance now how can those starving in Africa relate to this particular teaching okay so you have, you have a situation where, um, uh, and, and this is in other parts of the material, mm-hmm. that some people find themselves in birth conditions that are very harsh. So you might be born into a, uh, an impoverished family in Africa or okay. something. Now, according to Seth, there is no accident that that, that occurred. So that the individual, in, in concert with their inner self, uh, and that goes into a, a uh, a long, uh, there's, you know, that's a big discussion about the mechanics of that. But according to Seth, that there's no accident that somebody finds himself in an impoverished family in Africa, or they wind up a son of the Rockefellers. And you know, you can almost feel that intuitively that this is just not an accident. Okay, and uh, and and, it's, and 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 we're not putting a value judgment saying that one is worse, one is bad, or one is is good. Right. Because according to Seth, people reincarnate in such a manner that they're going to experience these different things until they learn compassion for everyone and understand that we're all one. And if somebody's starving on this planet, in certain terms, we're all starving. Now, that being, that being given, mm-hmm. after childhood ends, according to Seth, an individual within the range of probabilities, within a range of what's possible, they can, commit, can change their reality. So they, that someone who is poor can change and become abundant. Now, 
uh, if they are uh, again, if they're if they're born into this situation, then there's reasons why they set up these challenges, and uh, uh, you know, in order for that person to pull out of that situation, they're probably going to have to do some fancy footwork in terms of changing their beliefs. But the theory is indeed, and if you if you go to almost any country in the world, yeah. and it could be as poverty stricken as you want, there are going to be individuals in that village or in that town that do pull themselves out of poverty. Anywhere you go, there'll be some, some who do. Now there might now and and those people, mm -hmm. well, Seth would say there's no accident that they, and it's not just that they were just smarter, that there this had to do uh, with their beliefs. And on the other hand, if you take a look at a global perspective, if you have a, a an entire country that has tremendous poverty in it, that is a reflection of the beliefs of the country, but it's also a reflection of the beliefs of the world. That the world is the world is letting that happen, that there are you know such such dramatic abundance in one area and such poverty in the other, or that we're spending so much resources on weapons, for example, instead of spending resources on quality of life, or that we're messing up the fisheries and the and the forests instead of us mm -hmm. living a more having a more sane planet. So uh, I think more and more we're realizing that that. Um, that uh, whatever's going on on one side of the planet is really affected uh, deeply uh, by global belief systems, really. All right, Except speaking... Saying these belief systems yeah. are, are what the problem is, and that people need to uh, to become aware of who and what they are. And what we are, really are, according to Seth, are baby gods. All right, so, so tell me... So Seth, tell me. all gods in training. All right, so tell me, Sorry, how, do we, how, do we, how do we break the... The, uh, the 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 circle, or how do we break free from stubborn cultural beliefs? Okay, so um, so so there's really the, 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 these two ways. Okay, first of all, you learn the technology. There, there's a technology involved involved in manipulating a belief. So if you're sitting there telling yourself all day long that what you are is ugly or fat or poor. You're giving yourself these suggestions. You're literally hypnotizing yourself. And according to Seth, a thought is a thing. Mm -hmm. A thought is an electromagnetic energy pattern. It's and so that electromagnetic pa pattern will literally go out into the ma matrix and and pull in a reality. So what you you learn to manipulate your beliefs, and that might be uh, literally. Uh, 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 taking five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, you've got to take some time to just examine what your beliefs are first. First, you've got to discover what your beliefs are. And uh, then, after you discover what your beliefs are, you, you deliberately change them. And you might do a belief exercise or a self-hypnosis exercise to change uh, your, emo your, your habitual thought patterns. But the other side of that equation is Seth spends a lot of time teaching people uh, how to connect with their inner self, both during the day, and that has to do with really listening to your own voice, listening to your own intuition, uh, trusting that you have that voice, mm -hmm. going along with the flow of your spontaneous being, the joy of your being. In a way, it's abandoning yourself to the power and strength of your life and for the ego to stop trying to control everything and to try to open up to that inner self. But it also involves sort of a kind of a med meditative technique that Seth calls side time, where you're deliberately taking some time to go inward. And it also, he, Seth talks extensively about, about entering in the inner reality through the dream state. So he will teach, uh, Seth teaches lucid dream techniques and uh, techniques for astral projection. And as you know, I wrote a book on out-of-body experiences. Yes. It was based on my material, uh, based on my experience with Seth and other stuff before. And my book, Out-of-Body Adventures, has, um, has is been in print for over 25 years. And one of the reasons why, it, and it's really a manual for how to get out of, out of the body. And, and one of the reasons why it's still in existence and, and why it's, it's been around is because it, it, I have an entire section on working with beliefs, on creating the climate in order to get out of body. Because basically, as long as you're frightened, and uh, many people are, mm -hmm. because there's an underlying fear in, in, in the belief systems mentioned in this culture, where they don't, people don't really believe that the universe is really a safe place, 
And as long as you believe that or are focusing on negativity in any way, it interferes with you being able to really sort of go gallivanting outside your physical body. Rick, I, but I, the fact of the matter is that we can go gallivanting outside of our physical body. And let me tell you that, that 15% of the general population will have an out-of-body experience before they die. All right, Rick, I, Rick, Rick, I'd yeah. like to ask you what Seth teaches about the current uh, current religious philosophies that are prevalent in today's society. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, Seth goes into this at length, and, you know, I, I certainly don't want to uh, give this too cursory. And, by the way, we should, we should leave a few minutes for the secret to healing cancer that you mentioned it at the beginning. Yeah, we're going to but, do that um, after we come back from the break. Okay, good. Um, so, uh, okay. So what Seth would say is that, and he goes into this at length, is that basically religion, which is, of course is man's under, try, desire to understand God, you know, right. uh, uh, religion has always been a direct reflection of how developed human beings are. So, for example, what he describes the development of the ego consciousness. And the ego consciousness, he, you know, this is a long story, but to, just to make it short, Seth says that the ego consciousness is a good thing in a way, and it was meant, we were meant to have an ego consciousness, it's supposed to grow and develop and join with the, the inner self, but that it became overdeveloped and over-specialized. And what happens is, is that we had a dominating ego that became a tyrant. So then we, be, we, we had a God, you see, that was a reflection of our own ego. So we had a God that was dominating and a bit got, got angry easily, that was male, and was male, because before that time uh, there were a lot of female gods. And so that basically our religions are a reflection of how advanced we are. Now, there is, according to that, there is God. Mm -hmm. There is all that is. You know, Jesus Christ was a teacher. Um, but, but according to Seth, you know, G Jesus Christ was, and, and these other teachers in Buddha, they were teaching stuff that they understood. But, you know, what humans went, went ahead and did with that teaching, uh, well, we know, for example, uh, I mean, we, you know, in Christianity, we know we had the, the, uh, the Crusades, yes. we know we had the Inquisition, you know, so, you know, and, and he doesn't, put, he's not putting down religion, but he's saying that human beings have taken religion in directions that the teachers didn't, obviously, didn't mean you to go in. And, uh, and then he describes uh, that, uh, that we're at a point now where certain certain parts of those religious beliefs, we, we have to start moving beyond. For example, the belief that man is sinful, or that he can't be trusted, or that, um, or, or from the scientific viewpoint, you get, you get almost the same thing. I mean, uh, you know, our religions have taught us to, you know, to uh, worship God, but they haven't really taught us to love the God within us. All right, stand by, and, Rick. You and I have to take our final break. Sure. Exonation, Rick Stack is my special guest. Here's a couple of websites, www.sethlearningcenter.org and sethcenter.com. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exon, Rick Stack, and I will be back on the other side of this short break. Don't go away. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. The moment I 
wake up before I put on my makeup. I say a little prayer for you. Go walk home in my hair now. And wondering what dress to wear now. I say a little prayer for you. Exo Nation, Rick Stack is my special guest this hour, www.sethlearningcenter.org and sethcenter.com. Rick, uh, during, the, uh, during the hour, I've been uh, also talking about the secret healing, I'm sorry, the secret to healing cancer and the Seth material. Tell me about the uh, secret to healing cancer. Uh, this is a book that my, publish, my company publishes, written by uh, Dr. Su, who is a Taiwanese doctor. He's a, he was a medical doctor, then he was, became a psychiatrist, then he became the head of Taipei General Hospital Psychiatry Division for a while. And uh, what he's been doing is he's been treating cancer and other physical and mental illnesses using the principles of the set material. And those principles, and he's he's been get, been getting such incredible results, mm-hmm. basically helping people to heal themselves that you that he's getting really famous over there, and basically it's almost it's extremely difficult even to get an appointment with him. His his clinic, he has a set clinic over there that's absolutely filled. Now the principle, of course, is because since you create your reality, right. that means that if you're ill, you created that too, and that 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 illness is a reflection of uh, what's going on is your immune system is no longer functioning the way it usually does. For example, Dr. Sue mentions that cancer cells are produced in the body every day, but those cancer cells are eliminated naturally by the body. They're killed off, Mm -hmm. and the body's immune system just handles them. Well, at one point along the line, the immune system is not functioning well when somebody gets a serious illness. And according to uh, Dr. Sue and according to Seth, this is because there is a problem within the psyche. And, uh, and that often, is often caused uh, by the very beliefs that we were talking about. When people don't believe that they have power, when they don't believe that the universe is safe, when they have fear, when they don't believe that what they are is good, th- this, deep down, this results in a whole lifestyle where they might wind up repressing certain things, repressing emotions, hmm. or having a lifetime that's not really filled with joy, but might be filled w- with blocks. And at, at a certain point, if those blocks get too much and per- people are blocking their energy and their joy or folk and wind up feeling hopeless within themselves, for example, just because they're in a, a marriage that they hate or because they're in a job that they hate or because they have a pro, they just got fired from their job or a myriad of stress, uh, stress uh, problems or problems. And, and, and this has been demonstrated in, in the field of psychoneuroimmunology, the connection mm-hmm. between um, societal factors and psychological factors and illness. Of course, they're still investigating it, and they're going to be doing so for quite some time uh, because the medical profession is a little bit slow uh, to catch up with the research. But this is what the, the position is. If you have an illness, if you have cancer or any serious illness, it didn't just hit you accidentally that it happened as a result of a reflection of an inner problem. And no no one should be ashamed of those inner problems. The whole planet is working through these inner problems, but these these same inner problems manifest in different ways. Rick, I hate to do this, but we've run out of time for tonight. I want to thank you ever so much for joining us. We'll have to have you back on in the future to continue this uh, fascinating discussion about Seth and yourself. And um, it's truly amazing. Rick Stack has been my guest this hour, ExoNation, www.sethlearningcenter.org and sethcenter.com. I'll be back on the other side of the news at six and a half minutes past the top of the hour as the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away.